Hi guys, in today's video I'm talking about doing microstock photography on a budget and that entails all the camera bodies, lenses and lighting equipment that I'll use. To start off with I'll tell you about how I begun my photographic journey on a tight budget and what choices I made and what compromises I made to take photos and videos but not overextend myself and get myself into debt. Each part of the video will be linked in the description with a time so you'll be able to go straight to what camera bodies I chose, what lenses I decided to buy and what lighting systems I would choose on a budget and each part will be linked in the description under the time uh, of the video. Um, I'll also go to at the end of the video um, what recommendations I would go for if I was starting off as a microstock photographer or videographer now and I was on a tight budget. So if you want any tips about uh, camera bodies and lenses you should go for or think about, uh, that's at the end of the video. Well I hope you enjoy it. I set up uh, my home studio uh, at the end of a really long work day when everyone had gone to bed so I'm a little bit tired in this video but uh, I think the information is quite valuable so I uh, hope you enjoy it don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you in my next video see you hi guys today's video is about how to get into microstock photography and videography without getting into debt and once you're established how to keep your costs down Realistically, you can get into uh, stock photography and stock footage by just using your smartphone. And I'm not talking about the $1300 iPhone 11 Pro. I'm just talking about a standard smartphone like the one I have. It's the iPhone 5. Uh, you can also uh, use Samsung or Google Pixel. But if you really want to if you really want to get into stock photography and videography and you don't have a camera and you can't afford one that shouldn't stop you. Grab your phone look at some tutorials on YouTube or read up and just get out there with your phone. Often what I find with stock photography and photojournalism is as long as the photos meet the basic criteria of composition sharpness, uh, no artifacts, then it's not the image quality per se, it's the subject of the photo. And if you happen to be at the right place at the right time with your iPhone and the subject is compelling, then there is a high chance that that will be accepted and also sell well on the stock agencies. Okay, so having said that, um, I will go now into uh, my story of being a photographer on a low budget um, and how I started uh, my journey into stock photography with very little uh, money to spend on cameras or lenses or tripods or lights or flashes. So I'll start my story eight years ago when um, I bought a Canon 60D and this is it here and uh, the reason I bought this camera was um, primarily the flip out screen which at that time I don't think the D5200 in the Nikon range had come out yet uh, and it was the only uh, crop sensor DSLR at the time I believe with a flip screen. I needed to shoot a lot of video and photos with the camera uh, because I was shooting for magazines uh, doing photo stories but I was also working for a studio making videos and also uh, creating videos for my own uh, purposes. A couple of um, advertisements and some short films with friends. So that was why I chose the 60D. 
Um, I couldn't afford a full frame camera like a 5D Mark II at the time. I think it was up around the $2,000 mark. And to be honest, I could barely afford to buy this camera. I think I bought it new and it was around the $899 or Euro mark, which was expensive. Um, it had a crop sensor which I didn't mind, which was good for video and the quality for photos was certainly good enough for magazines. So I was uh, using the 60D for I think the first uh, two years of my stock photography journey and then after having it for eight years uh, it finally died after I took it to the store to get repaired for the second time and I just totally gave up the ghost. I didn't really have enough money to buy uh, another camera because I pay a mortgage, uh, mouths have to be fed and cars have to be bought, they break down, you have to replace them um, and at that time I didn't really have uh, the extra hundreds and hundreds of dollars or euros that's needed to buy a good quality DSLR so what I went is down market and I went to the Canon 550D uh, which at this time I think it's uh, like 12 or 15 years old and not a very impressive camera. Um, it had the same sensor as the 60D which I thought the image quality would be okay with um, but the processing in this is I think it's a lower processor or a processor that's older than the 60D and I found the images to be really low quality and I wasn't comfortable uploading the photos to stock agencies after I got some rejections and also looking at the images uh, at a hundred percent. At this stage I wasn't uploading footage, I was just doing photos only. Um, so I decided that uh, I really needed to get serious and buy a proper replacement for my 60D. So I saved some money and scraped together enough money to buy um, a Canon 70D which is filming me right now. And uh, the 70D was bought second hand from a camera store in the Netherlands and I think I bought it for around 470 or 480 euros uh, which is pretty cheap uh, for such a good quality camera. I do have to uh, be honest though, this is the second version I bought. I also bought a grey market version from Hong Kong and uh, that had a lot of grit on the or dirt on the sensor which wouldn't budge after I cleaned it so I ended up sending it back to Hong Kong and they eventually refunded my money so it wasn't a smooth uh, transition buying this second hand gear so I ended up going to the local camera store and the second hand department online and I saw that they had these 70Ds on sale um, I couldn't afford the up market version of the 70D which is the 80D I think that was going for around 899 euros and the 70D can do most of the things that the 80D can do except um, making time-lapse uh, movies in body uh, and creating an mp4 file doing that the 70D can't do that and I think the ADD can also film 1080 video at 60p, which the 70D can only do at 30 and 24. So I was making compromises, but the 20 megapixel sensor on the 70D was definitely an upgrade from my Canon 60D. And uh, it was definitely good enough for stock photography. Another advantage of going the next model up 
from the 60D was that I could still use my old lenses that I had on the uh, 60D uh, and I could also micro tune those lenses so that they weren't back focusing or front focusing. One of the problems with the 60D was you couldn't adjust the lenses to the body um, like you could with the older 50D and the uh, 7D which is a bit more professional body. So I went with the 70D and stayed within my budget so I wouldn't get into debt and still be able to deliver high quality photos and video. And I view microstock photography as a business and I just don't see the point in spending $3,000 or $3,500 on a Canon 5D Mark IV if I'm not even making that much money with my stock business. I mean, I'm really quite prepared to take a $480 or Euro hit, but I'm definitely not going to uh, spend $3,500. Now we get into video, I covered the stills cameras and now we'll get into the footage which I've been doing for around four or five months now um, and I saw the way the stock market was, uh, the stock photography market was becoming oversaturated. I wanted another extra income stream and that income stream is stock footage which is growing at this moment and represents uh, good income to stock uh, photographers if they want to transition part of their workflow over to footage. I, I spent months and months looking for the best option to go with uh, for footage and looking at all the Panasonic Micro Four Thirds uh, cameras and the Sony cameras and there were too many compromises with the with the Panasonics and the Sony's and they were also expensive and I eventually went for this Panasonic FZ300 and it was a bit of a no-brainer I didn't want to be investing in a whole new lens system for video um, and the advantage of this is that it has a built-in lens that goes from 24 to 600 that's 600. So by buying this one body, uh, which I spent 500 uh, euros to buy a brand new body with uh, I think a two or three year guarantee, um, that was the end of the costs. So I didn't have to spend any more. I didn't have to buy three new lenses just to fit within that 24 to 600 range. Not that I use 600mm seriously for video anyway, although I have done it on the odd occasion with uh, my YouTube videos. But having said that about all the advantages of uh, buying a bridge camera with a fixed lens, uh, there are also compromises. Uh, and one of the compromises is uh, because this lens goes from 24mm to 600 image quality is going to be compromised, especially for stills photography. Luckily with video photography, uh, with footage uh, shooting, um, the image quality is fine. Uh, but the camera does have also a tiny sensor, I think it's a 1 inch 2 thirds, which is smaller than a 1 inch sensor. Um, so at low light it does struggle, um, but I also find that it can be an advantage because uh, it's such a small sensor uh, in the daylight then you don't have to stop down so much or put an ND filter over the lens to keep everything evenly exposed. What else can I say about this camera? Oh, it does 4K... Uh, 30 frames and it does 1080 at 60 frames and 24 I believe. I think it does 24 or 30. No, I should do 24. But it definitely does 1080 at 60 frames, which is really good if you want to use slow motion. 
It has a built-in time-lapse function and creates MP4 movies and I use those time-lapse movies a lot uh, for my stock photography. In fact, I think uh, last month I sold uh, a time-lapse uh, that I took of clouds moving over The Hague, uh, which I was very pleased about. The other compromise is, uh, say with my 70D that I'm filming on, um, it creates good stills and it can do video at 1080, uh, 24 frames per second or 24p. Um, whereas this one is really strong in video, it can do stills uh, wide open and say to 50 millimeters, but on the long end it's really soft and I've had a number of rejections with uh, the stock agencies uploading stills from this camera. So much so that I would rather upload stills from my uh, smartphone than I would using this camera unless the conditions were perfect. So yeah, that's my Panasonic which has helped me uh, start creating footage for my microstock footage business. And now we will go on to my budget friendly lenses. The first uh, lens I got when I bought my Canon 60D was a 50mm prime lens 1.8. I think it was the Mark II version. And that was given to me by my boss at the studio at the time. Shout out to us. And uh, that was a good way for me to start uh, getting used to making photos and also knowing what fairly good quality images I could create. However, um, despite being a fantastic lens, and I think everyone should have a 50mm, it wasn't versatile enough. So I had to uh, go with uh, a a better lens that would give me a wider range of choices of shots uh, for video and photography. So the first uh, cheap lens I got was an old Canon 28mm to 105. The range was perfect. I think it was uh, 3.5 to 6.3, I think, I'm not sure. But I used that lens for a while, but I noticed, because uh, in comparison to my 50mm lens, the images were really not sharp. And it didn't have image stabilization either, which was a real disadvantage for video, because I was doing video as well. So um, I had to make a decision and I had a choice. I could have gone for Canon L lenses and had no problems, just put them on the camera. You know everything, well, should work properly. No back focusing, no front focusing, sharp images. To be quite honest, I didn't have that luxury and I wanted the option to have a f2.8 aperture. So I went with the Sigma 17 to 50 IS uh, f2.8 and that uh, gave me uh, a wide enough aperture so I should, could shoot in lower light. It also had the image stabilization so I could shoot uh, video doing handheld sometimes. Um, and I bought that for around 500 uh, euros, brand new at the time. And the uh, equivalent in the Canon range was the 10 or 11 to 22 millimeter. And I think the difference in price was two to 300 euros more for the Canon. And the Sigma was meant to be sharp on the in the middle of the image. However. I didn't have a, a long lens and I was really looking to have a portrait lens around the 70 to 200 range but I couldn't afford the $2,000 or Euro Canon uh, 70 to 200. So I made a huge compromise and I bought this thing. That is a Tamron 70 to 300 lens. 
and I bought this brand new. It was on special, I think it was a sellout sale at the local electronics store in town. And I paid 99 euros for it. I couldn't believe my luck. A 70 to 300 millimeter lens for 99 euros. It was going to be great. However, I found that the this version of the Tamron 70 to 300 was the worst lens I've ever used. The focus was extremely slow and noisy and the image quality was appalling. Having said that, I didn't have any choice and I used this for my sports lens uh, for about six months because I just didn't have money to replace it. So I ended up even shooting a, an international beach volleyball championship for an American volleyball magazine and my photo got on the front cover of that magazine using this crappy lens. So I was sitting there with all the pro shooters with their white L lenses and uh, 300mm 2.8s and here I was with this and it was just going bzzz, bzzz, bzzz. and I think every 30 shots that they got I got maybe one in focus however that was enough to get me the photos that I needed I just had to put in the extra time and effort especially in uh, Lightroom, making sure that everything looked right. Anyway, luckily this lens ended up breaking and I was forced again to upgrade. And I upgraded to this little guy who was another Tamron, but it's a 55mm 200mm, 55 to 200 and I read a uh, lens review by Lee Frost in the uh, DSLR photography magazine from the UK. And he said for the price, it delivered good image quality. So I looked on all the second-hand uh, websites because they don't make it new anymore. And I found one for about 125 euros, I think it was. And uh, I ended up using this for mm, probably six months to a year and I got some good quality photos with it. On the long end though, you had to step down to, or stop down, to like F8 to really squeeze the sharpness out of it. And in low light, that's not really a factor or possibility you just get too much noise or camera shake unless you're on a tripod so what I did was um, I looked at my options and I started looking at all the camera reviews and I came up with another compromise this Sigma 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 IS this was going uh, new retail at the time for around 890 euros whereas I think the equivalent Canon was going for around 1900 euros so I was saving almost a thousand euros buying this. The image stabilization helped me with my video work and the f2 point aperture helped me by with making portraits and shooting in low light. So with that setup, I had uh, a nice budget setup that wasn't top of the line and I didn't buy everything at once. I just bought when I could afford it. I also uh, bought this 28mm Canon uh, 2.8 lens for around 215 euros, brand new. And that's when I didn't have the Sigma 17 to 50. So I had uh, a 50 millimeter and this 28 millimeter to start with. 
and that covered most of my needs until I could afford something better. So I just made do with what I had. Okay, so I'll now just talk about my lighting options and they were really basic. Um, I saw the Canon uh, speed lights, I think it's the 580 and the 600. They were going for hundreds and hundreds of euros and to be quite honest, I really didn't see the point. So what I did was I got another speed light, which I forgot to put on the table. So this is the Yongnuo 565. And I think there's other newer versions now that can shoot at higher sync speeds. This one has a sync speed maximum of 250th of a second, which is okay for my needs. But uh, if you need a faster flash, with a faster shutter speed, they're also available from Yongnuo. So, you know, 125 bucks for something that works well, as opposed to 500. I mean, it's a no-brainer, really. You can get, you know, three or four of these and still be uh, ahead financially. Okay, so it's a pretty basic lighting setup. Um, and I've been... Uh, doing indoor photography for my stock photography such as food and my lighting setup was really basic I just uh, used the window of my house and a table near it and um, a reflector and my Yongnuo flash and I found that worked during daylight hours okay uh, but if I wanted to shoot uh, when it was really dark outside, then uh, I didn't have any options really. And I didn't really feel comfortable spending money on lighting, but I got an opportunity last weekend when I was hired to do a portrait shooting session of 30 people uh, at a women's club uh, event. And it was going to be at night, so I had no choice but to artificially light the uh, set. And what I did was I scanned uh, the websites for what was the best bang for my buck and what would also work uh, for video because I make these YouTube videos and I also want to make indoor uh, food photography videos and product photography videos. So eventually I came to uh, the website of a local camera store in the Netherlands and they were advertising Bressa lights, a uh, three light setup with soft boxes and they were constant lights as well so I could use it for video and also I didn't have to faff around with flash photography which would reduce my stress levels especially with professional portrait shoots which can be very stressful and if you don't have everything dialed in properly then things can go from bad to worse and I didn't want to deal with that stress I bought the uh, Bressa 3 lights set up for 116 euros, which was pretty cheap in my eyes. And that was a Black Friday deal. I think it was a couple of weeks ago, actually. Uh, so I got a discount on that as well. Uh, I also bought a big white uh, backdrop, which I think cost around 60 euros. So I was about 170 something euros in the hole. Luckily this portrait shooting job was paying uh, 300 euros. Uh, the shoot took three hours um, and editing the photos took another three to four hours. So I made uh, around uh, 170 euros which is not bad for six hours work. I think that's what it was. So that uh, was great because I could incorporate these lights into my business and I offset the cost with this uh, photography portrait shoot. Okay, so uh, in summary, I chose my cameras and lenses and light setups because I 
uh, did and I still do magazine shoots uh, for a variety of different subjects and I also do some portrait stuff in my work um, as well as microstock photography and footage shooting so it had to suit a uh, enthusiast level uh, of equipment but also a kind of semi-pro because I was making money from these photos and videos but if I was only shooting stock then I think I would do things quite differently um, I would definitely buy a Canon 70D again but uh, my lenses and the camera itself would all be second hand and I've got a, a little bit of a wish list to start off with I think uh, for the lens that I would start off with uh, I'm a Canon shooter but you can apply the equivalent uh, products to Nikon or Sony or any other brand but if I was doing it all again I would uh, buy second hand lenses and the first lens I would get would be the Canon 15mm to 85mm second hand. Now that gives you a huge range from wide to telephoto. Uh, the quality of the images from this lens I've heard are pretty sharp. I haven't used it but I've read a lot of reviews and I would take a gamble on that myself. And I'd just use that to be honest, until I started making money. Um, and you can also use the image stabilization so you could shoot video with it handheld or you could use uh, it on a tripod. Um, but I wouldn't splurge on anything else until I had been shooting with that and at least got three to four hundred photos up on the agencies with that. That was starting to generate an income. If, you, if I made more money, enough to go for a second lens, then I would go for the 55 or the Canon 55 to 250 millimeter latest version. I think it's the Mark II or three, and it's got a special focusing motor now for Canon cameras that have that uh, dual pixel autofocus. That's a really cheap lens and it's good quality. Um, I've read a lot of reviews that it is sharp. I've been really tempted to sell this lens and just go for the Canon 55-250. It gives you an extra 50 millimeters on this. And often I don't need that extra 2.8 aperture. However, I'm kind of attached to the 2.8, we're especially doing portrait shoots. So at this time, I'm sticking with the Sigma. But if I was starting all over again, doing stock photography only and footage, I would just go for that. I don't need that 2.8 for that. Uh, and the third lens I would go for, if the 15mm wasn't wide enough, would be the Canon 10 to 18 millimeter IS, and for a wide-angle lens, 10 to 18 millimeters with IS, I think you're only paying around 300 dollars or 300 euros brand new, which is a steal. If you went second-hand, you would go get it even cheaper, and I would probably go second-hand anyway. You have to be careful because there's no guarantees uh, if you get it off the Dutch version of Craig's list that the quality will be there. I went the safe route and bought from the camera store's second hand uh, department and that gave me a one year guarantee and also I could go back to the camera store and say oh this isn't right can you fix it like oh, with this 70D which I'm filming uh, the sensor was dirty again and I couldn't budge the grit or the dirt that was on there again so I just took it back to the camera store and said can you do it for me and they did it for me for free so that's it when you're starting off in microstock you don't need to spend a ton you can start off with your smartphone you can even use a 
Canon 550D or the T2i I think it's called until you get some momentum. The most important thing is that you get out there and you just start making photos and uploading them. So that's all I have for this week. Merry Christmas everyone and uh, I'll see you next time on the next video. All the best. Subscribe!